Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the second video of RDK tutorial. Let us just have a quick recap of our last video before we continue our understanding of this fantastic Kami Informatics library. We started off with installing RDKit and importing various modules from this RDKit library. Then we read an Excel file which had name and smile strings of 50 nitrogen containing compounds. In the first section, we saw how we can read, draw and write molecules in RDKit. The first and foremost step in RDKit for analyzing molecules is generating their molecular objects from smile strings. And we can easily do that using cam module and mole from smiles method. You can also visualize these molecular objects using mole to image method. And then we went on to save these files as a PNG image. We saw with the help of more to grid image method, you can print the molecular structures of these molecules in the form of grids. Next, we talked about this pandas tools module, which has this method add molecule column to frame, which would just take the smile strings of these molecules and make another column called mole, which had molecular objects in it in just a single line of code. Then we saw how we can load and read dot .stf files with the help of pandas tools module and stmole supplier. We also saw that if we have molecular objects, we can just write these in the form of smile strings with the help of mole to smiles method. Next, we talked about generating two and three D geometries of the molecules. We can generate two D geometries using all cam module and compute two D coordinates method. And for generating three D geometries in the same module, we have embed molecule method. And we can also read and save these files as dot stf extension or dot mole extension. In RDKit, we also have the option of optimizing molecules using molecular force field. Then we went on to getting atom centric properties of these molecules. For example, you can generate the instance of this method and store it as a variable, which has all the information about the atoms and you can call different methods on it. To get information, for example, get symbol method will provide you the symbol of the atom and get atomic number will give you the atomic number of the atom. You can also get information about bone types and there are many other methods like that with which you can get atom centric properties of the molecules. Next, we talked about highlighting molecules. All we have to do is define a pattern and generate the indices of the atoms in a given molecule and using prepare and draw molecule method, you can draw those patterns in a molecule and you can do that for the whole data set as well and quickly visualize these patterns in a molecule. Next, we went ahead and see how we can do substructure search in RDKit. Again, the procedure is similar to highlighting molecule. We have to define a pattern and then this command over here will screen for this pattern in all the molecules and will store the molecules who have this pattern in a variable called matches as molecular objects. And again, if we want, we can just visualize these molecules using draw.mole to grid image method. So let's start today's lecture with deleting and replacing patterns in a molecule. I am randomly picking a molecule from a data set. Let's visualize this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a pattern in this molecule using mole from smarts method. The pattern that I'm using is C triple bond N. Hash here is used to donate triple bonds. So I'm storing this in a variable called pat. In the next step, I'm using this all cam module and delete substructs method, which would take in argument as this molecule in which we want to delete this pattern and the pattern itself, which we want to delete. So uh, here I am trying to see if I can get rid of this nitride. So let's run this. Now let's visualize this molecular object, which we have generated after deleting this pattern. Now you can see we have this molecule which is missing this nitrile pattern. Similarly, you can replace a pattern in a molecule. Let me just print out the molecular structure for you again. So in this molecule, what we want to do is replace this nitrile functionality with amide bond. So the pattern that we want to insert has been defined here using mole from smiles method. And the pattern which we want to delete has been stored in this variable pad. Now what we have to do is use this all cam module and use this replace substructs method uh, on it, which would take in argument as the molecular object on which we want to do the transformation followed by pattern which, you, which we want to delete and then the pattern which we want to insert. So let's run this and have a look at our new molecule. 
So now you can see here we have replaced this nitrile functionality with CONH2. The next topic in our today's lecture is fragmentation. The RD kit also provides an implementation of the BRICS algorithm. BRICS provides a method for fragmenting molecules along synthetically accessible bonds. BRICS stands for Breaking of Retrosynthetically Interesting Chemical Substructures is designed to break down large chemical structures into smaller fragments or scaffolds. This can be useful in drug discovery and cheminformatics for various purposes such as the analysis of chemical diversity, scaffold hopping or virtual screening. The algorithm identifies and breaks chemical structures at specific bones resulting in a set of molecular fragments. Now let's see how we can do that in RDKit. If you remember last time, we had this approved underscore drugs.stf file which had coordinates of around 1284 molecules. What I'm doing here is using moles to grid image to print out the first 16 molecular structures in that file. So let's go ahead and do that. These are the first 16 molecules in that data set. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this molecule and I'm going to see if we can fragment this molecule into smaller fragments using RD kit. This is at index position 2 or this is our third molecule. So what I'm going to do here is use this BRICS module and BRICS decompose method which takes in argument as our molecular object. Now the fragments will be stored in this variable. So let's go ahead and see these fragments. So now you can see that this molecule has been fragmented into six different fragments. If you want to visualize these fragments, I am again using for loop and uh, followed by making molecular objects from these smile strings and then using draw module and mold to image method to print these molecular structures out. So let's go ahead and run this command. These are the molecular structures that we have got after running the BRICS algorithm. Now, apart from fragmentation, you can also rebid molecules from fragments. The BRICS module also provides an option to apply the BRICS rules to a set of fragments to create new molecules. So what I'm going to be doing here is again using this BRICS module and instead of using the BRICS decompose method which would decompose a molecule, I am using this BRICS build method which would build the fragments into different types of molecules which would take in argument as list of molecular objects of these fragments and if we see above we have stored these molecular objects in moles variable. Now let's run this command and see our first molecule. So this is the first synthetically accessible molecule that we can generate from these fragments using BRICS rules. Now there are many other molecules as well. One point I want to make here is that various combinations of different fragments will lead to many different molecules. This is just one of the molecules that we have seen. So let's see what other molecules can be generated from these fragments. So this is another molecule which is at least hypothetically accessible using these molecular fragments. And in this manner you can explore different other molecules which can be accessed from these fragments. Now I want to move on to our next topic of today's lecture which is generating fingerprints. The first fingerprint that I want to talk about is MACAS keys which is a set of 166 public keys implemented as smarts. Now let's just go ahead and have a look at our data set again. So this is the data set that we have been using which contains the names, smiles and molecular objects of these molecules. Now let me just randomly grab this fourth molecule here. So this is N-methyl propionamide and we are going to be generating MACAS keys for this molecule. What I'm doing here is using this MACAS keys module which has this gen MACAS keys method which would take in argument as molecular object and we are going to be storing fingerprints in the form of bit vectors. So let's go ahead and run this. So this is how explicit bit vector looks like which has information about the MACAS keys of this molecule. Now if you want to visualize these fingerprints in the form of zeros and ones you have to convert these into numpy arrays which I'm doing here in this line of code and I'm printing out this array. Next I'm also wanna know how many zeros and ones are there as fingerprint bits are usually in the form of zeros and ones. So let's run this command. 
So this is how our Macus keys for this molecule looks like. And we have around 149 zeros and 18 ones. Now, if you want to know which at which positions the bits are on or at which positions the bits have a value of one, I am calling get on bits method on this bit vector object. So let's run this. Now in the result, you can see these are the positions at which the bits are on or bits have a value of one. Now, let us just say if you want to generate Macus keys for the whole data set, then you have to use this list comprehension or for loop here, which would iterate through each molecular object in the data set and bit vector objects would be stored in this variable for the whole data set. Then I'm converting this bit vector into NumPy arrays, followed by generating a data set and appending it to our original data set, which has names and smile strings and molecular objects in it. So let's go ahead and run this and visualize our data set. So this is our final data set looks like, which has uh, Macus keys in it. The first column is of that of name, smiles then, and we have molecular object as well. And these are the Macus keys for each molecule. Now you can go ahead and store this as an Excel or CSV file, but make sure you drop this small column over here because we are not gonna be needing it anymore. So let me just save this file as an Excel file. So you can see this Macus underscore keys Excel file has been stored in our folder in here. Next, I wanna talk about this Morgan fingerprint. Let's just again uh, print out the molecular structure of this fifth molecule. So this is an methyl propionamide and we are gonna be generating Morgan fingerprints on this. For this, I'm using this all cam module and get Morgan fingerprint as bit vector method which takes in argument as molecular object right here a radius radius can be one two three and bits uh, refers to the length of the bits you can use 512 1024 2048 or 4096 even more uh, i'm storing the bit information in a variable called by here so the output will uh, return uh, uh, fingerprints in the form of bit vector which I am storing in this variable mf underscore bv like I showed you before in order to visualize these uh, Morgan fingerprints in the form of zeros and ones you have to convert this into numpy array that is what I am doing here in the next line of code then I am printing this array and in the end I am counting the number of zeros and ones that I have in this Morgan fingerprint so let's run this now uh, the array looks something like that. Since the length is long, uh, I'm not printing each and every element in this array. This is the result of counter function. We have 2034 zeros and 14 ones. And again, if you want to know the positions of the bits where they are on or where they have value of one, I'm using this dot get on bits method. So let's run this. Now uh, in the result, we can see we have a list of bit positions so these are the positions where we have a bit value equal to one if you want to visualize for what structural feature these bits are on what i'm doing here is i'm using draw morgan bit method which is in draw module and i am putting in argument as molecular object bit id which we want to explore and in the end i am calling this bit info parameter which we have stored in here let's run this so you can see that at bit ID 345 or at bit position 345, uh, it's one because of the presence of nitrogen here. Now you can go ahead and explore other bit positions as well. So let's uh, type in 807. So you can see this bit position is on because of the presence of this carbonyl carbon. Now, if you want to visualize each and every structural feature for which the bits value is our own. So for that, we have to iterate through each bit ID. That's what I'm doing here. And I am again visualizing these with the help of draw Morgan bits function. So let's run this command and see our output. Now here you can see in the output, we have all the structural features where the bits are on. All the bit positions are also available to see. 
now if you want to generate the morgan fingerprint for the whole data set uh, i am using list comprehension here and all you have to do is iterate through each molecule in the data set and apply this get morgan fingerprint as bit vector method on these molecular objects and it will be stored as bit vector object as a list in this variable then we can convert these into numpy arrays followed by converting them into data frame and finally appending it to our original data set to give our final data set containing morgan fingerprint so let's run this and see our data set so this is our data set which has names smiles and molecular objects along with their morgan fingerprints of length 2048 next i want to talk about how you can generate similarity maps using fingerprints just again i am printing out the molecular structures of 16 molecules in our stmol object so these are the first 16 molecules that we have in our data set. Now what I want to do is I'm going to get two molecules which have some similar functionalities. For example, this molecule and this molecule over here. And I'm just going to be printing these molecules out here. This is the uh, molecule mm, that uh, we are going to be mapping on. And this is our reference molecule. So let me just display the images of both the molecules. So these are two molecules that we are going to be using for similarity maps. Now, the reference molecule is the one uh, whose features we want to map onto our original molecule. So this is kind of our molecule on which we are going to be generating similarity maps. And this would be our reference molecule. So let's just see how we can do that. You can just do that with a single line of code. Uh, I'm using here similarity maps module and get similarity map for fingerprint method on it, which takes in uh, argument uh, as the reference molecule followed by the molecule on which we want to generate these similarity maps then we also have to input the fingerprint based on which we want to generate these similarity maps so similarity maps dot get morgan fingerprint will uh, calculate the morgan fingerprint so morgan fingerprint here would be responsible for the similarity maps that we are going to be seeing in a second so let's just run this command and see our similarity map in the output you can see the similarity maps on this molecule and if you compare it to our reference molecule here you can see that we have many common functionalities such as these ether group and alkyl functionalities over here and as a result of which these have been highlighted in green we also have this nitrogen containing ring and an adjoining aromatic ring as a result of which we have these atoms highlighted in green in this molecule however this amide functionality as well as this tertiary amine is missing in a reference molecule so it has been highlighted in pink one thing i want to point out here is that if you change the fingerprint it will change the similarity map now let us say instead of morgan fingerprint i want to use topological torsion fingerprint so let me just copy this here and paste it instead of this similarity map stored get morgan fingerprint now the similarity maps will be generated based on this topological torsion fingerprint let me just run this command so you can see uh, the similarity map of this molecule is a little different from what we saw with the morgan fingerprint so uh, here you can see these portions are uh, kind of neutral here so basically they don't really show any relationship with the reference molecule similarly if you use a uh, atom pair fingerprint uh, i'm assuming the similarity map will be um, different so what i'm doing is copying and pasting here and again i'm gonna be running this command to see our similarity maps so now you can see here again this is little different from uh, the similarity maps that we have generated using morgan fingerprint and topological torsion fingerprint now let's move on to tenimoto similarity again i am uh, printing the two molecules out for which we want to compare this uh, tenimoto similarity uh, but before i go into the um, coding aspect of it i just want to give you a brief overview of tenimoto similarity the tenimoto similarity also known as the jacquard index is the measure of the similarity between two sets in the context of chemi informatics and molecular informatics the tenimoto similarity is often used to quantify the similarity between two chemical compounds based on their molecular fingerprints uh, now this is the formula for tenimoto similarity coefficient uh, 
we have two sets A and B which are basically sets of features or fingerprints representing chemical compounds. The numerator here is the size or number of elements of the intersection of sets A and B whereas denominator is the size of the union of sets A and B. The Tanimoto coefficient ranges from 0 to 1. 0 indicates no similarity whereas 1 indicates complete similarity. Now let us just suppose uh, we have two molecules for which we wanna calculate the Tanimoto coefficient or, or we wanna see the Tanimoto similarity. What we have to do first is generate their molecular fingerprints. It could be Morgan fingerprint, it could be Macas keys, it could be topological torsion or any other fingerprint. It does not really matter. Now what we are gonna do uh, then is we are gonna be calculating the number of elements or number of bits which we have uh, at the intersection of A and B. And then we are gonna be calculating the number of uh, elements or number of bits at the union of these two fingerprints and then using this tenumeto coefficient formula we are gonna be inserting these numbers in here in the numerator and denominator and then we are gonna be calculating the tenumeto coefficient which would give us kind of the uh, percentage of how these two molecules are similar. So let's go back to the uh, uh, Google Collab notebook and see how we can do that. And one thing I wanna point uh, point out here is that you don't uh, manually need to calculate all these things. There are methods out there which you can use and calculate the Tanimoto similarity in just few lines of codes. So we are back uh, at the notebook. I have already printed out these two molecules for which we wanna see the um, uh, Tanimoto similarity. Now again, like I said, uh, we have to first calculate some fingerprint. I am here cal calculating a Morgan fingerprint using the same procedure, um, all cam module and get Morgan fingerprint as bit vector method, which would take in our argument as molecular object, radius, number of bits. These are hyperparameters and you can change it as per your uh, desire. And I am storing these bit vectors in these two variables for these two molecules. Now all you have to do is use the Stanimoto similarity method here which would take in argument as the bit vector of these two molecules which we want to compare. So let's run both these commands and see our output. So uh, the Tanimoto coefficient for these two molecules is 0 0.20. Like I mentioned before, zero basically means um, no relationship uh, or uh, no similarity and one means uh, identical molecule. So we have a value of around 0 0.20. So that kind of means that these two molecules are around 20% similar based on these Morgan fingerprints. And again, if you change the fingerprint, it's gonna change the um, this coefficient. For example, here I am generating the Macus keys for these two molecules and storing these in our two variables followed by uh, running Tanimoto similarity coefficient uh, function on this. So let's run both these and see the output. So according to Macas keys, these are 52% similar. So while you are generating this Tanimoto similarity coefficient, just keep in mind that by changing the um, fingerprint or even changing these hyperparameters within a fingerprint can ch change the uh, coefficient to a larger extent. There are other uh, available similarity metrics such as dice, cosine, Sokal, Russell. So you can go ahead and explore these. I'm just giving you uh, another example of dice similarity. Again, you can use this dice similarity function and which would take in argument as bit vectors of the uh, molecular objects. Now, these are the Macus keys uh, uh, here. These are the Macus keys here. Uh, so let's run this and see the dice similarity. So dice similarity is uh, around 68.6%. So uh, according to dice index, it is 68.6% similar. Now let us just say there is one reference molecule or a hit molecule and you wanna screen it against uh, a lots of uh, compounds. Now uh, for that, let me just go ahead and print out our data set again. Let me just randomly grab this molecule at index position 3 which is by Rolidin 2 own. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna be uh, calculating the Tanimoto coefficient of this molecule against the whole data set. And for that, again, I have to generate the Morgan fingerprint of each molecular object in the data set which I am doing here using list comprehension. So let's run this. Then I also have to uh, calculate the Tanimoto similarity coefficient by uh, comparing the fingerprint of this molecule to each molecule in the data set and which I'm doing here uh, in the list comprehension here. So let's run this. And in this uh, line of code, I am making another column called TS underscore coefficient, which would uh, append a column of this name to this data frame, which would contain the Tanimoto coefficients of this molecule uh, with respect to all the molecules in our data set. So let's run this and have a look at our data set.
So in the output, you can see we have names, smiles, molecular objects, and Tenimoto coefficients. So basically, this means that this molecule over here is 12% similar to N-formyl piperidine, and with this, it has uh, around 3.7% similarity. This is 3.5% similar. This is the same molecule. So we have uh, a value of one. So basically these are identical molecules and so on. So in this manner, you can generate these coefficients for large number of molecule and kind of visualize these in a data set. Next, I want to talk about how you can generate 2D and 3D descriptors using RDKit. Now for that, let me just go ahead and read my uh, data set again. Let's just have a look at our first five data points. So this has names and smile strings of the molecules. What I'm going to do here is create molecular objects with hydrogen attached. So I am again here running a for loop and using these functions to get our desired output. So let me run this quickly. And I am also visualizing these first 16 molecules with the hydrogens attached using mole to grid image method. So let me run this and see our image. Now uh, we, we can visualize these molecules uh, in a data set and you can very well see we have hydrogens attached to them. And I am I wanna stress here again that uh, just in case you are generating 3D descriptors, it's always recommended to have these hydrogens on, otherwise the values can vary. Now let us just see how we can calculate 2D descriptors using RDKit. I'm just randomly grabbing a fourth molecule which is at index position 3 in our data set and I'm storing this molecular object in a variable called mole. So let's uh, store this and print the molecular structure of this molecule. So this is the molecule for which we are going to be calculating the 2D descriptors. Now let's say you are interested in calculating a single descriptor for this molecule. Here I am calculating maximum absolute partial charges for a single molecule. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this descriptors module and I'm going to call this method on it max apps partial charges which takes in parameter as the molecular object. So let's run this and see the output. So in the output we can see a numerical value 0.356 which is in fact the max absolute partial charge of this molecule. Now now let's say you want to calculate molecular weight for this molecule. Again you are going to be using this descriptor module and call this mole weight method on it. Let's run this and see the output. So the molecular weight of this compound is 85.106. Now, um, if you want to calculate all the descriptor for this molecule, you can uh, use the same module and call this calc mole descriptors method on it, which would calculate all the descriptors for this molecule and it will be stored in the form of a dictionary with key value pairs, key being the uh, descriptor name and value being its value. Now in order to visualize these appropriately, I am converting this, mm, I will be converting this uh, test variable which would contain a dictionary into a data frame and I'm going to be printing this uh, data frame out. So let's run this command and see our output. So this is since we have just one molecule, so it's just a single row and it has all the 210 descriptors listed here. Now, just in case if you are wondering that you want to calculate all the descriptors for the whole data set, for this I'm creating an empty list here. Then I'm going to be using for loop which will iterate through each molecular object and calculate molecular descriptor using calc mole descriptor method. And it would append the output to this empty list here and at the end of for loop uh, we will have 50 dictionaries and each containing 210 key value pairs. Um, in the next line of code here uh, again just for uh, visualizing these uh, in an appropriate manner I'm gonna be converting this dictionaries into a data frame followed by appending it to our original data set which had name, smiles and molecular objects. So let's just go ahead and run both these commands and in the end just visualize uh, the data set. So these are the first five data points as you can see we have the name, smiles, molecular object and then uh, all the descriptors here. So we have 213 columns. Leave these three, we are going to be left with 210 columns which are the 2D molecular descriptors for this molecule. And in the end, I'm going to be storing this data frame in the form of Excel. Make sure you drop this column before uh, you uh, export this as an Excel or CSV file because we are no longer going to be needing this small column. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's see how we can calculate the 3D descriptors for these molecules. Uh, let me just print out the molecular structure of this molecule here. 
So this is the molecule for which we want to calculate the 3D descriptors. Now, uh, the very first step is converting this 2D structure into a 3D geometry, which we can do that using all cam module and embed molecular method on it. Let's run this. Now, uh, in the output we have got zero value so that means it was successful in generating the 3d coordinates now let's visualize our molecule again so now you can see we have the 3d geometry of this molecule now we can go ahead and calculate the 3d descriptors for this molecule using descriptor 3d module and calc mold descriptors 3d method which would take an argument as molecular object so let's run this now uh, we have got the output in the form of dictionaries which contains key value pairs key being the name of the 3d descriptor and value being the value of this 3d descriptor similarly we can calculate 3d descriptors for all the molecules in a data set all we have to do is run a for loop which will iterate through each molecule and using embed molecule function it will convert the molecule into 3d objects followed by calculating descriptors with the help of descriptor 3d module and calc mold descriptor 3d method and at the end we will have a list of dictionaries which can be converted into a data frame followed by concatenating it to our original data set which has name smiles and molecular objects in it uh, so let us just go ahead and run this command and have a look at the first five data points containing 3d descriptors this is our final data set which has name smiles molecular objects and 3d descriptors for these molecules now you can also visualize these descriptors so let me just um, go ahead and print the first 16 molecules in our sd mole object so these are the um, drug molecules which were in our approved underscore drugs dot stf files now what i'm gonna do here is i'm just gonna uh, randomly grab this third molecule over here and I'm going to be storing this molecular object in a variable called more. So let's store this uh, molecular object and print the structure. So this is the molecule on which we want to visualize uh, our descriptors. Now I want to visualize gastrical charges on these molecules. So this is the code for that. Let me just break down the code for you. This function all cam dot compute gastiger charges is used to compute gastiger charges for each atom in the molecule. Gastiger charges are a type of partial charge assignment used in computational chemistry. Now, in the next line of code, the computer gastiger charges are then retrieved for each atom using a list comprehension. The list contrips will contain the gastiger charges for each atom in the molecule. In the next line of code here, uh, the similarity maps dot get similarity map from weights method is used to generate the similarity map based on the gastiger charges. So the parameter passed on to this function are mole, which is the molecule for which the similarity map is generated. Next one is contrips, the list generated here which contains the gastiger charges for each atom. The next one is color map. The color map used uh, for visualizing in this case is jet. And the last one is contour lines. Uh, it represents the number of contour lines to be displayed in the visualization. So let's run this command here. So the resulting figure is a visual representation of the similarity map based on the gastiger charges with colors representing different charge values and contour lines providing additional visualization details. The visualization can also be useful in understanding the distribution of charges within the molecule. So in here, blue portions represent uh, nucleophilic centers or where nucleophilic charges are concentrated and these uh, yellowish and orangish portions represent electrophilic centers. Similarly, we can uh, visualize script and contribution to log p. This function rdmol descriptors dot underscore calcrip and contrips is used to calculate Crippen contribution for each atom in the molecule mole. The Crippen contributions are part of the Crippen method for estimating molecular partition coefficients which are a measure of lipophilicity. The calculated Crippen contributions are extracted from the results of this function using the list comprehension here. The list comprehension extracts the first element of each tuple in the contrips list which corresponds to the Crippen contribution for each atom. Um, get similarity maps from weights function is used to generate similarity maps based on the extracted Crippen contribution. The parameters are similar 
uh, to what we have seen before so let's just go ahead and run this command so the resulting figure is a visual representation of the similarity map based on Crippen contributions with colors representing different contribution values and contour lines providing additional visualization details. This can be useful in understanding the distribution of lipophilicity within the molecule. Next, I want to talk about Lipinski Rule of 5. The Lipinski Rule of 5 is a set of guidelines used in drug discovery to assess the drug likeness of chemical compounds. According to Lipinski Rule of 5, a molecule is more likely to be orally active if it has molecular weight less than 500 Daltons, no more than 5 hydrogen bond donors, no more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors and a calculated log p value of less than 5 and log p is basically octanol water partition coefficient and molecules that do not adhere to Lipinski rule of 5 may still have therapeutic potential but they might face challenges in terms of absorption distribution metabolism and excretion properties so i have this drug underscore candidates dot sdf file which has the coordinates of eight molecules in it so i'm gonna be using sdmol supplier to read these files and the molecular objects would be stored in this variable called drugs so let's run this now let me just go ahead and print out the molecular structures stored in drugs variable using draw dot moles to grid image method now these are the eight molecules which we have in our drug underscore candidates.sdf file. Now what are we going to do here is I'm going to be calculating the molecular descriptors for all these eight molecules and I have already showed you how we can do that. All we have to do is just run a for loop and use this calc mol descriptors method on these molecular objects and I'm also going to be converting these uh, dictionaries of descriptors into a data frame followed by concatenating it to our molecular objects so let's run both of these commands and have a look at our data set now this is the data set which has all the 2d descriptors now in order to check if these molecules adhere to the Lipinski's rule of 5 all we need is these four descriptors which are molecular weight uh, uh, and O count NHOH count and mol log p. So what I'm gonna do here is extract all these descriptors from the data set. I am I'm calling a described method on it, which would print out the information regarding all these four descriptors. So you can see here regarding molecular weight, we have a minimum molecular weight of 303 and maximum uh, of 1202. And according to Lipinski rule of five, we need to have um, a molecular weight less than 500 similarly anno count or hydrogen bond acceptors we have minimum of 5 and maximum of 23 so there are molecules which have more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors similarly hydrogen bond donors we have a condition that in, it needs to be less than 5 or equal to 5 and we have a minimum of 1 and maximum of 13 mm, uh, regarding log p i think all these molecules do satisfy the log p condition which is less than 5 and our maximum value is 4.639 so let me just slice this data set based on these conditions and what i'm gonna do is just print out the molecular objects which adhere to lipinski rule of 5 so let me just run both of these commands here so these are the uh, four molecules which satisfy all these conditions which we have in Lipinski's rule of five now let's visualize these molecules who adhere to these conditions so these are the four molecules um, which uh, followed the Lipinski rule of five and let me just print out the other molecules as well so these are the four molecules which do not stick to the Lipinski rule of five one point I want to make here is that despite the fact that these molecules don't follow Lipinski rule of five, uh, these are still drugs. This is erythromycin, this is cyclosporins, and these two are also FDA approved drugs. So um, while you are screening molecules based on Lipinski rule of five, uh, make sure you have an open perspective. Coming to the last topic of our tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can draw reactions in RDKit. Now let us suppose that this is the reaction which you want to draw in RDKit. This is the um, amidation of benzoic acid and these are the corresponding smile strings of these molecules. For that, what you have to do is combine the smile strings of the reactants with a dot in between them followed by, followed by two greater than signs and then in the end add the smile strings of the product. So just copy the string as a whole and paste it here. 
Now what we are going to do is use this old cam module and reaction from smarts method which takes in argument as the as a single smile string that we have just generated make sure you put the use smiles parameter as two as we are using smiles here so that's the only piece of code that you need to uh, draw reactions in rdkit so let's run this and see our output so in this manner you can visualize the reaction using reaction from smarts method now let us say you have a reagent as well for that uh, all you have to do is uh, put the smile strings of this reagent in between the two greater than signs copy this notation as a whole and paste it in here i already have the single smiles notation of this reaction so i'm just gonna run this command and i'm gonna see the output so now you can see we have the reagent dicyclohexyl carbodimide just above the arrow in our reaction so this was all about rd kit that i wanted to discuss if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section and i will be happy to help thank you for watching